it's all Queen Sarah here. I am here with Kevin 360 Wellness. And the reason why I thought it will be the best relationship ever for me to partner up with Kevin is, as you know, I am a bikini competitor, a successful champion as well. Therefore, I understand the importance and the hard work it takes to bring up the right physique and how much hard work it actually takes to be healthy and partake in a fitness lifestyle. So Kevin, starting with pretty basic information, can you please uh, not only provide a simple description of digital fitness for our community, but also explain how did we end up where we are? Thank you, Sarah, for this great <laughs> intro. Um, and very happy to be here having this chat with you. Um, so yeah, my name is Kevin, uh, the founder and CEO of 360 Wellness. Um, and I think what's best is for me just to remind everybody like how the idea came through. Um, yes. I've been myself competing a lot in triathlon over the last couple of years. I think the shirt remind that. Um, and I've just observed too many people just thinking that the harder they're going to train and, you know, the more they're going to train, the better they're going to get. And it pretty much ended up always the same way. Uh -huh. Injury and having to start everything from scratch, right? Yeah, I've just had an injury, actually. I've just recovered from it. So I totally yeah. relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry to hear that. But glad you fully recovered. I know you've got a few competitions coming up as well, right? Yes, yes, I do. I do. But please carry on. Let me not interrupt you. Okay, so yeah, I'm observing that, you know, everyone started to talk about having an holistic approach to training and fitness in a general way. Um, but I realized as well that all the, you know, apps or platforms that we have right now are mm -hmm. pretty much all focused on the training load, training intensity. And if you want to start having that holistic approach, then you end up downloading like four, five, six different apps. Um, you're going to go into, you know, Strava for some social, you're going to go into My Fitness Pal if you want to start paying attention to your nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, when you realize that sleep and recovery is just as important, um, mm -hmm. you may end up downloading another app like Sleep Cycle or a couple more. And just the list keeps going, you know, paying attention to meditation and mental healthness, and you're going to end up downloading Calm, etc. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, Hold on a second. Like, I, I wish I could just have like a simple app that allowed me to track how well I train, eat, feel, and sleep, just all in one place. And you know, having that app that actually kind of makes sense of mm -hmm. all those data for me, and you know, by the power of, of algorithm and AI, actually start making some research on the patterns that the app could identify from my past weeks or months of training and just mm -hmm. giving me some warning you know um as an example uh we realize that every time you ramp up your training volume while you feel impacted by it because your mood level trend tend to go down uh mm -hmm. or your level of energy for example or you're not sleeping just as well so you know i just started with that id but it's much harder to keep an ID light than it is to switch it off. And I just didn't want that to happen. So um, I started working on it, making some drawings every day during my lunch break, started to conceptualize that wellness tracker that could fit everything in one and actually deliver a wellness call to people, just guiding mm -hmm. them uh, one step at a time uh, to get to you know a healthier, more balanced journey. So it started like that. And... I think six months down the road after conceptualizing the product, I thought, I think I'm really onto something right now. Mm -hmm. So if I want to give this a chance, well, I have to be all in. So I gave my resignation to my company. That was one of the hardest decisions I've had to make after 11 years in the company. And I just started building it. So I hired a team of software engineers in Cambodia and we built 360 Wellness, a um, very innovative wellness tracker with a full wellness marketplace around it, mm -hmm. where as a user, I can find health and fitness professionals offering like virtual classes, which has been 
very um, high demand since the beginning of the pandemic, but also found nutritionists, found endurance coaches that could create personalized training plan directly upload it into my calendar and have a very comprehensive overview on how mm -hmm. well I'm doing overall. So that's the you know original concept um, of 360 wellness and the product that we have launched last October. Fantastic. That is absolutely amazing. So the idea was basically from the just having too many apps and it's the idea is of all in wellness app for 360 wellness. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. And then I think now I understand why nobody had done it before. <laughs> because <much> it's <laughs> such a huge handover that I didn't really realize at first. So I'm so glad that I you know, head in first. Um, and we finally managed to put it all together with a very mm -hmm. modern and fresh uh, UI, UX, delivering, you know, a user experience like Nova, uh, swiping through the different screens very easily, mm -hmm. and keep tracking your wellness journey. So I'm very amazed that the team I've built over the last year managed to deliver, bring that vision to life as we speak. Fantastic. Well, Thank you for that. I've got another question because you've mentioned marketplace, classes. So what are the actual features of your platform? So at the moment, we've uh, mm -hmm. launched in October with our wellness tracker. Um, so the tracker is actually mostly, you know, manual input from the user right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we just resumed actually three weeks ago, the walk on connected wearables. So um, by May, you will be able as well to sync your Garmin, Sunto, Polar, or Fitbit device directly with 360. Which one do you got? Uh, Versa 3, Fitbit Versa mm. 3. Okay, great. So you'll be able to sync it with 360 Wellness and upload awesome. all your activities there, which will directly sync with a wellness tracker, uh, update your active training time into your fitness module, um, but also update your sleeping time into your recovery module. So the manual input will come only on the uh, nutrition side, obviously, as well as on the feel side, where we're asking what's your energy, what's your mood level. Um, we got a pretty cool emotional report as well. Um, you know, mental healthness has been very, very big topic. Um, and we've seen the impact of the pandemic on people um, you know, with all of that endless news about the pandemic going on, people being stuck at home, um, so much uncertainty about what the future is going to be. Um, so we thought that, you know, the first step towards mindfulness is actually to keep your emotions in check and identify them. So we've built an emotional report that prompt every two days where the user can just record how they feel and keep track over time as a journal directly in a wellness tracker, um, their emotions. And, you know, life is like 10% of whatever happened to you and 90% on how you react to it. So being aware of how you feel is extremely important to adjust what you're going to do next. So that's the wellness tracker. And we've already built the health and fitness professional live virtual classes marketplace. So we've been operating with a close, um, you know, cycle of trainers, early adopters of the platform um, to validate our technology, uh, proceed the debugging over the last couple of months, uh, mm -hmm. bring over the clients, starting to see how much value we bring to them in the process as finding a live event, signing up, paying for it, and joining the live directly in it. Mm -hmm. um, which is pretty cool because, you know, everybody today has a smart TV or at least a Chromecast. And because we have an application within just two clicks, you can actually use the wireless projection feature to mm -hmm. literally turn every living room into your at-home fitness studio, right? I love that. So that's what we have right now. Um, but we have so much more in preparation um, as okay. we speak. Um, we've got 15 engineers working full time right now. So uh, we will be launching the web app next month with a lot of great features for the professionals to actually build the client database, manage their finances, uh, and just create and publish their offerings through the platform. 
Um, the offering being, you know, product and services, um, which can be digital products such as a life class, but also uh, on-site boot camps or personal training sessions, sending private invitation to the own clients. So it's going to become way more than just the live virtual classes marketplace as it is right now. Fantastic. Thank you for that. I'm really excited. So the, all the updates coming up, I'm definitely excited for the May synchronization as I personally, I can relate to it so much. I literally have five different apps on my phone. <laughs> Nothing's interlinked. So if I can have everything together, I can avoid so much confusion in my life, which is absolutely fantastic. So those are the sort of like the good features, but you said there was no competitors and I personally can't think of any competitors at this moment of time, but what are the advantages of digital fitness and how is it better than other platforms? Because what's stopping anyone from being like, dang, this is a great idea. Huge corporation is going to literally simulate you and destroy you if that is even possible. So how... Yeah. How do you make it unique compared to others and stop it from happening? So there are a lot of platforms out there, right? So mm. we, we can categorize them. So you've got those tracking apps, right? Which mm -hmm. basically are going to track your steps, track your activities and deliver to you a bunch of data uh, that you don't have the time, nor the patience, nor the willingness to actually <laughs> dive through and try to make some sense out of it. Then you got the, you know, the other ones uh, providing coaching services like coaching platforms. So I could mention my PT Hub. Uh, I could mention Just Coach, but there are many others, right? Mm -hmm. um, but those operate like a close uh, environment, right? So you, you're a fitness trainer. You're like, I need a technology platform. So I don't need to send some PDF or emails to my clients with a program. I can go onto that platform, directly load it to the you know, mobile app um, scheduler or calendar. Um, mm -hmm. So this is great for providing the online training coaches, but it only solved like one problem that they face. The number one, which is the technology. But if you have your closed coaching platform, how do you actually bring on new clients, right? Most of the people being fitness, yoga instructors, endurance coaches, they don't really have like, you know, technology or business background. They mostly coming from being ex-professional athlete or sport enthusiast and, you know, going into that industry and they're like, okay, great. I got my coaching platform. How do I get new clients? Got to build a website. Um, I got to start talking about sales funnel and how I'm going to drive traffic through social marketing what is that even and then they're like okay let's start by you know creating a facebook page or creating like an instagram account and you know they invite all the friends so it's quite a exciting at the beginning you're getting 200 300 uh, followers pretty easily and then you start posting every day and you realize like you're getting five likes average because just the algorithm are doing everything they can to push you to pay for sponsored ads, right? Mm -hmm. So they really struggle. And we thought instead of having this as like a closed end environment, let's just have an open marketplace, right? So yes, you, your company is going to be listed there. You're going to have direct access to your clients to uh, you know, sell your services to them, but the clients could also go to the marketplace and find other companies, right? So by doing so, if I am a yoga instructor and I'm bringing my yoga clients, well, they may as well sign up to, you know, a nutritionist services or actually mm -hmm. consume some online fitness classes, which they don't with me. So everyone benefits by mm -hmm. building this sport wellness community together and on top of that, we are also having a very aggressive sales and marketing campaign starting in May to bring masses because we also have a lot of user centric features like the wellness tracker it can be used for free by anyone. Uh, we're going to have a social wall as well coming inside the applications. So you'll need to browse through all the Facebook crap that you can actually see there. But it's going to be a wall dedicated on wellness, sport, and fitness, so the topics that you're more likely to be interested in. Um, mm -hmm. so, so that's really, you know, the, the conception, the vision that we have for that product. 
and um, what's coming up for us in the next couple of months. And really, that differentiation from, from those two aspects of mention, um, as well as the UI and UX. Um, what, what fitness app do you have right now on your mobile, Sarah? Oh gosh, I've got my fitness pal, I've got Fitbit, I've got I am motivation. Um what else have I got? That's I've quite I've got a few already. I can't think of it. it's different <laughs> all the aspects yeah. the mental well being, physical, in nutrition. Um, you know, I also also Instagram to post the photos and to contact my coach. So it's just so many platforms I need and apps. And I'm horrible at any sort of storage. So I need to keep deleting files because I've just got too much. <laughs> yeah. And so. and I bet that if you open any of them right now, they're all gonna look the same way. You've got that bottom navigation bar with the buttons where you click my profile, my calendar. Then you have the three dots where we put everything else we don't know where to put. And I was <laughs> like, look, I just don't want to build it that way. Let's do something different, right? So if you open ours, there is no bottom navigation tab. It's all about swiping left and right. And I'm just looking at my little niece. She's seven years old. She's lovely. And she just picks a phone. And the first thing she does is just swiping up, swiping left, swiping right, right? I mean, the younger generation is so used to the swiping features that we thought, well, that's what we got to implement. So the, the UX and the navigation model of our app is really like no over out there, uh, so which is another- Like Tinder, right? Like this, like that's sort of a principle, yeah? That, that yeah. was very, like that's what got everyone hooked on Tinder is the, how easy it was to just make a decision, you know? So that's exactly what I said to my development team last year. So um, you have those swiping cards at the bottom since we removed the navigation bar. So we are using those swiping cards to actually bring useful content, wellness tips, educational content to our users. So you Love swipe it. up and then you got to swipe your left if you're not interested. You got to swipe your right if you want to take an action. So some of the swiping cards either, you know, redirect you to... Uh, a link like of, of an article related to wellness that could be useful for you. Either just uh, send you a reminder about you missing to input your nutrition uh, score for the last couple of days. Um, and I just told the dev team, I want a Tinder-like experience. And then again, I understand why not many people are doing that and why Tinder is pretty much all about the swipe because it's a very complicated feature to do. So really, I mean, I, I don't know nothing about programming, so I can't imagine. But, you know, for me, it sounds just like you might eat left or right, but I guess it's not that simple. <laughs> I thought so too. And uh, then I saw how many weeks and months we actually spent trying to get a great swiping left and right experience. Uh, it's definitely easier to put buttons and let people click on it. <laughs> so I've been pretty much a nightmare to my dev team. And guys, if you see this, I apologize. But it was very important to me that we really focus on the user experience and uh, you, we deliver something that differentiate ourselves and really stand out to what the competitors are doing. And I think by now, um, we got that product that really stand out. Yeah, so that is definitely... What I always look for is how founders and the development teams can answer actually the uniqueness question, because very often those are repeated answers because they're actually not unique at all. And literally, I cannot think of a single app that not only combines everything together, but also has a swiping experience rather than just a toolbar at the bottom. So I am really, really excited about the answer you've just given. Uh, There's definitely a tick in the right box. <laughs> But let's awesome. focus a little bit on the um, sort of different aspects of the app as we know a little bit about it, what features has it got. Uh, I want to focus a little bit on the security and actually how strong and safe is digital fitness and how do you provide a safe and user-friendly service to the users. So if you could answer that question, I would really appreciate that. Sure. Like, it, it sounds really cliche, right? But when I studied that journey, I was like, I want to build something better. I really want to benefit to the people with that product that we are delivering. And that goes as well into, I want to respect people's privacy. 
and I don't need to sell people data and I will never sell people data. I'm the first one being upset when, you know, I see Strava making billions of dollars by selling all the route and stuff to cities to improve, you know, the infrastructures, oh, wow. etc. because that's how they monetize, right? And, and I'm like, well, my data, you know, I was training 20 hours a week, riding, like riding my bike, running around. And I'm like, my data don't belong to you, right? That, that's mine. So you have to be aware that any free app is basically you are the product, right? Exactly. I mean, if it don't sell to you something, well, they just sell your data and they sell you to somebody else. If it's so, for free, you're the product. That is one of the best statements I agree with. Absolutely. So the first thing I did was just to hire a lawyer. And, you know, not many startups start with a lawyer, but I studied with a <laughs> lawyer saying, I want to be GPDR compliant. I want to enhance user privacy. I don't want to be sharing any user data to any third party, to anyone else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that has been like a very strong point from day one for us like mm -hmm. your data are yours we're never gonna sell it we're never gonna use it in another way but to give you better recommendations and better insights on your own body and your own wellness journey so everything is fully encrypted and mm -hmm. everything is totally safe within our database and infrastructure Fantastic. That is so important. I think the problem with privacy is people appreciate it as well as the importance of it once they've lost it. Everyone knows that Facebook, Instagram, all the social media platforms use the data, but no one really tends to think about it. And everyone just agrees to everything, connects everything together, all the information is shared, and everyone seems to be fine about it, which is just absolutely crazy to me because you know, if you're going to share your data, at least make money from it. No, don't give it away for free because it's just so wrong, you know? That's, That's true. That. And it, uh, we kind of reached that point where people are like, oh, I'm giving up. Everything is connected with my Google account everywhere. And I know they know everything about me. Uh, and it's a bit sad that we actually got to that point, right? Um, but there is a lot of values that I build this company upon. Um, and this is, you know, definitely one of them. And uh, I'll keep my word to our community that everything is going to be fully safe with us. That is definitely the right <laughs> approach. And it's definitely a futuristic approach. I completely agree. And it's, it's a great feature you should definitely ensure people are aware of. So now yeah, we're not selling that well enough. I know I should probably put it in big on the website as well, right? Which, which yeah. we don't. Yeah. yeah. Dev team, if you're listening, <laughs> additional piece of work for you guys. <laughs> exactly. I'm coming up with some design requirements for rebranding <laughs> the web page. Um, but it will be done. Everything at a time, right? We, we've got so much in the pipeline all going. Um, I think we, we over 50 people involved at the moment in the project. So uh, a lot of coordination happening. Uh, but we are yeah, very excited about, you know, uh, increasing that velocity that we need to bring new features faster to the market because it's all you know depending on the human capital resources and final resources that you have uh, having ideas is great but if you're not able to execute and implement then it's just useless so we, we raised successfully our seed seed equity round earlier this year uh, mm -hmm. So that's why we could just increase the amount of people that we have in the team, bringing new team of engineers. So increasing the velocity of building that vision and uh, bringing the new features to the product. Fantastic. I'm really excited for the future holds. I don't think I've said it enough times already. <laughs> um, but, True. but what about the... Um, could you touch upon the tokenomics and the use cases of a DEFIT itself? Like what benefits can we get if we hold the token from the investor user and, you know, the instructor perspective as well, because that's all it also is about. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I kept the, the best for the end. I didn't even mention when you ask about the competitive advantages we have over the competition, um, the DEFIT is clearly a big one. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, when we build that platform, um, 
the vision from start was how we're going to empower the million of health and fitness professionals out there uh, to do their business better, to operate more efficiently, to grow their revenue online more easily. And we ended up with that fully decentralized wellness marketplace because at the end of the day, we're just providing the technology for people to connect together. And as we evolved in the thinking of the platform, we're starting to think what's more natural to give and provide the community with their own token, right? With their own digital yeah. cryptocurrency. So Diffit was born from there. And we're like, it just makes so much sense. And we really have, you know, a product that people are going to be using on their daily lives. And I think that's what crypto need at that stage. Of course, mm -hmm. crypto needs to have decentralized exchange. Crypto needs to have launch pads, incubators. But crypto needs real product use cases. And we're looking here at, you know, online fitness studied at 6 billion US dollar market size last year and has been projected to grow by a CAGA over 33% over the next five years to reach 59 billion US dollar in 2025. So we're like, you know, what if we go and conquer a significant market share from that business mm -hmm. and we manage to drive the adoption of our own DeFi cryptocurrency built in the platform to mm -hmm. use as a credible alternative to fiat payment currencies. Today, you can sign up for a live class using your credit card, right? We have a Stripe API integration. We have Apple in-app purchase integrated. We have Google in-app purchase integrated. But tomorrow, you can just choose as a payment method they feed, and you don't have to choose those anymore. So that becomes very exciting having not only a payment alternative, but also having the possibility to earn day feeds through completion of challenges, friend referrals, so driving the adoption. Um, and as you earn, as you improve, well, you benefit from discounts on product, merchandising, sport brands apparel. We started recently to contact a few brands and tell them, look, we're building a wonderful wellness sport community globally we can promote you to our community but we want you to give 30 percent discount to our community so That's the fantastic. people are going to be you know um staking their feet and, and accumulating those coins either by buying them either by earning them they're going to be able to benefit from 20 30 40 percent discounts from the brands the product that they need every day a pair of running shoes uh you know your next workout apparel anything that you buy anyway. Well, yeah. tomorrow you can buy it at a discounted price using your DeFit cryptocurrencies for 360 Wellness. I didn't know that. That is amazing. I, I, did not. I need to send you the brands that we've already partnered with. So obviously the brands are very excited, right? Mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I did a lot of triathlon, I was reached out all the time by brand offering me some you know, ambassadorship or sponsorship deals. And I was like, hold on a second. Like just me and my 12K followers on Instagram, I can get the 60% discount from any brand I like just because they're happy I rate and I promote it on my social media account. I'm like, what if tomorrow I have a wellness sport community of 1 million people, right? And, you know, those brands are making a lot of margin because they need to spend a lot of marketing, right? So if they make a 70% gross margin, it's because 40% of it just go into marketing just for them to exist. So mm -hmm. when you come and say, look, I've got a huge community. Those people are all buying two pair of running shoes a year, two running shorts, two singlets or T-shirts, maybe one cap. You want to capture that purchasing power from them? Fine, but you give them discounts. So you give them 30%. You don't need to spend 50 on marketing because we are giving you access to the community and the people get discount and buy product cheaper. So it's like a win-win relationship for everybody by coming together. Absolutely. I love that. It's, it's all about giving and everyone benefiting from it. And I always preach it to people that win-win is the best situation everyone could have. And making it work is something so important people often neglect, I think. 
so true so we've got a very nice australian swimwear brand already we've got a woman apparel uh sport fitness apparel brand from singapore uh, and then we have a couple more brands coming in very very soon so I'll, I'll share with you and you can already if you like the product they're pretty awesome uh, get some pretty good discount using 360 wellness awesome fantastic thank you so much for it and i think it, i've got a few more questions but we'll see how it goes um unfortunately i need to touch upon the topic because you know uh, 360 wellness deficit it's all very suitable for the current pandemic that we have like now many people um live at home and they can still live healthy using your service but my question is whether using your application is paid for every month is it free to download and use how did you project how do you actually generate the income and just basically how, how does the whole financial aspect of it works for you as well that is a very good question and we've had to debate a lot about it okay so as a user the first thing that upset me the most whenever i download a new application is that they ask me to put my credit card details down for a two weeks trial that i'm most likely going to forget and then they're gonna auto renew my subscription and charge me 40 bucks the next month I don't know you, Sarah, but I hate that. So all, all the time, Amazon Prime all the time happens. I say, oh, <laughs> and then I end up paying it. I don't even want it. That's my guilt again. Yeah, well, there's a reason they do that. A lot of people forget and they get a lot of cash. But, you know, when you really want to build something better in the space, you can't just do the same thing as the others do and the things that you don't like. So... I thought I'm just going to make the application absolutely free of membership. So it's free to download, it's free to use the tracker, and we're building the marketplace where we're going to connect you, where you can consume product, as I mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. you know, support apparel brands, but as well the services from health and fitness professionals. And we are actually only commission-based. So not only we take no subscription fees from the users, but we also take no membership or subscription fees from the professionals. Why? Because I just wanted to remove any kind of entry barrier as a coach. I don't want to be paying $200 upfront to get my coaching platform. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to be successful, right? So we wanted to show the commitment from our end that we're only going to pay ourselves if you grow your business successfully using our platform. And that mm -hmm. shows that we invest together. And the idea is not just to get the money from you up front, but the idea is to give you the product, the value, the technology, the marketing that you need to grow. And because you grow, well, we grow together. So we 100% commission based on all the products and services that will be offered onto the platform. Fantastic. That is very good. I still don't have a bad answer from you. I don't really like this. I like bad answers sometimes because then I can make a question. But you're giving only good answers. So I don't know what else to do now. Um, okay, let's let's try um, another angle then. What is the optimal number of users when it comes to business and private users needed for you to sustain your business model as well as the level out with the supply demand uh, ratio for the token itself? How is that? It's a very good one. Okay. So there is no real like optimal number, right? Because at the end of the day, there is a huge investment that we have done getting to that point into the technology, right? So uh, just to give you an idea, we've invested over 300,000 US dollar at this point to build a web application that's going to be launched next month to build a mobile application that was launched five months ago. Um, now, we said with technology and fully, you know, working all remotely and we're a technology business, so we don't have huge overheads, right? So we're already generating revenue since January and we, you know, can operate with any kind of numbers growing about 3,000 right now. Now, the goal that we have, because it's more about goal rather than optimal, um, we are highly confident that we could eat 5,000 health and fitness professional by the end of the year and getting a million downloads. So that's the goal for the year 
I mean, this year, last year was all about building the technology. This year is all about scaling. And I've made sure that we have the solid foundations to be ready to scale. There is no point launching something too quick and then realizing that you were absolutely not ready. So the foundations are there. We have a very solid plan to get to a million users this year. And we have a very solid plan to get our company up to 30 million turnover in the next five years. So I really believe that we have that unicorn tech potential business right now. And, you know, that's our revenue that I've mentioned. It's not about the transaction volume that's going to go through the platform, right? Because I said we are taking commissions. So if you are using our payment solutions being, you know, credit cards or defeat, um, for your full revenue as a coach, let's say I talk to some people making $2,000 a month, but I have some friends who are fitness instructors in Singapore and they are making $10,000 uh, US a month. They are very successful. So once they bring over that full amount of transactions on a monthly basis through our platform, selling their services, administrating their business, well, if we only catch like 10% of our total transaction volume and manage to drive defeat adoption for 10% of that total transaction volume, well, I think there's going to be a lot of scarcity for the um, defeat coin. And that's going to be something really, really huge. I love it. I'm really, really excited. But speaking of the defeat, um, on which blockchain will you guys be running on? And what is your problem? If it's Ethereum, how are you okay. going? Okay, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you, you, you got me now. Um, <laughs> so we, we definitely anticipated that, right? So we all know that there is a very congested network on, on Ethereum right now. Uh, gas fees are just going through the roof, uh, the speed as well. So it, it's fine into an investor business model, right? Where I'm buying a couple of thousand dollars, well, you know, fair enough, I can absorb the gas fees. Um, now, our goal is to really bring that into everyday use cases. And you could just buy a $5 or $10 class using the DeFit cryptocurrency. So you mm -hmm. can't just buy a $5 class and pay $20 gas fees. It wouldn't make sense. So we're launching on ERC-20. Um, actually, a smart contract has been deployed and successfully audited this week. Uh, so, you know, the cell is just right around the corner. Um, but we are already planning on the cross-chain integration. So, you know, there are several options. We could do for layer two or on Ethereum protocol, or we could go for something else. So there's a lot of platforms coming up, uh, like Moonbeam, like Polkadot. Um, but, you know, they aren't quite ready yet. Ethereum 2.0 as well. Uh, or there is Binance Smart Chain. You know, at the end of the day, BAC is already there and walking. So I know it's not decentralized, but while well, it's there and walking. So we're considering the options um, and we are definitely planning for a cross-chain integration and the bridge uh, shortly after the DeFi token sell, ensuring that once we create the blockchain wallet integration for DeFit to be actually uh, kept in 360 Wellness app to use as a mm -hmm. payment method, uh, we can ensure that transactions will be fast and transaction will be cheap, as this could be a real roadblock to the community for adopting the coin. Absolutely. That was that was my first thought. As soon as you said classes for $5, I was like, how is that even going to work? <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. That's a good answer. It's I, I'm glad you guys are already thinking about how you're going to overcome. And I think currently the Ethereum prices are an absolute rip off. I refuse to pay for delivery. So it's a pain for me to even pay for the Ethereum prices. So I am glad that you guys are already trying to come out of the problem that is clearly out there. It's, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Ethereum has been incredibly successful and opened so many doors, right, for so many other projects to actually come through the smart contract becoming very popular. Um, but it's also what's hurting them now. It's been just so popular that it's just totally <laughs> congested. Uh, so there's, yeah, a lot of bright people out there that saw the problem and are trying to come up with solutions. So we've been talking already um, to a few people and uh, just considering all the options 
and uh, making sure that we're going to pick the best one for the uh, DeFit and 360 wellness users down the road. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. That leads me actually very nicely. I was going to ask about the sale, what, where, how, everything about it, please. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not a question, by the way. Don't get too excited. But no, that, I that's a question. <laughs> yeah, you do know everything already. <laughs> it, it's a question I'm having a lot lately, which which is good. It means that you know, we, we've managed to get some good coverage um, through all the different social media channels and Twitter especially. Uh, just did an interview recently with New Kids on the Blockchain that's going to come out tomorrow. That's going to be super cool. Um, so when you have a big vision and ambition, you have to make sure that you surround yourself with the best, right? Um, so Defit has been already in our mind and we've been working on it since August last year. Um, but we were just, you know, as we are doing now with the Ethereum alternative, well, we were doing the same back then, looking at, you know, what's the best direction that we could take. Um, obviously, you know, YFDI was our first pick. Um, we approached them end of last year. They have been incredibly successful. Um, and we knew that they were preparing the launch pad for this year, and we definitely wanted to be one of the very first projects that they're going to launch. Uh, it hasn't been easy, and we've been in touch as well, Sarah, for a while, as you know. Uh, yeah. So it, it took a lot of convincing um, because they have a very tough selection process, but which we love as well, right? I mean, they, they're yeah. probably the best because they are very picky with the project that they launch, and they make sure to run sufficient background checks. And um, so this has been in discussion for a while uh, and we're so glad they you know, finally approved and are as excited as we are to actually launch the feat. Uh, they've done a pretty amazing video to promote the project, you seen it? Yes, I have, I love it. They've done such a good job with it. It just flows so well. I love Brilliant. it. Brilliant, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that was super awesome. And then we're like, okay, great. So you know what? We got like an amazing launchpad partner, uh, somebody we trust, somebody that share the same vision and values as we have. But launching is one thing, but how many projects launched then never really took off, right? So, well, many. <laughs> so we thought, okay, how are we gonna ensure, you know, not only a successful launch, but a successful development over the years, making sure that we're very well aware about the trends and what's the latest technologies onto the blockchain. Uh, obviously, I don't have all this knowledge. I, you know, I know what I know, but there's so much that I don't know. Okay. So we, we contacted Ferrum, uh, the Ferrum network, um, you know, got some calls together with the YFDI team and Ian, and uh, we had a great connection at first. And um, I think Ian and the Ferrum network saw the great potential of the project that we have, the great mission that we have, but also the very solid team and foundations that we have. So it's been an amazing news when um, they made the decision to incubate us uh, as part of the Ferrum advisory services. And now we're coming into that cell with two extremely strong partners, which are YFDI and Ferrum. Uh, about the cell, I think I've seen an announcement a bit earlier on Telegram. I'm not sure if you have. Yes, I have. Cool. So the sale, the private sale has been announced for early next week. Um, the day and time is yet to be confirmed. But as I mentioned, um, we got our smart contract deployed, successfully audited by Blockchain Concilium. So we're just ready to go. So make sure you follow the YFDI announcement channel. They'll post the exact day and time. Uh, both Ferrum and YFDI will be organizing it. Okay, brilliant. Awesome. Thank you. So join your Telegram wife dine firm for all the latest announcements on this free sale next week. I am don't, don't forget to join ours as well, Sarah. I mean, well, obviously we'll be sharing the news. <laughs> I already am a member, so it's like, you know, <laughs> but yeah, you can join 360 as well.
Um, so is there anything we haven't covered that you feel is super important to be shared? Any questions, any issues, anything that your community has raised and you would like to clarify, explain? Please, it's your time to shine, Kevin. Thank you. Um, I, I think, you know, you've had some very spot on questions and we've already covered quite a lot, actually. Um, so I don't really have anything specific. Um, you know, our viewers may have and, um, you know, we're very happy for them to come and ask directly onto our Telegram channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an amazing admin team across three continents. So we're basically covering all the time zone. There's always someone there to answer any question. Um, I'm just super excited at that point. You know, it's been a lot of hard work. The sale is coming next week. Um, we have everything lined up very well as well. Uh, for the TG, for the listing, for the staking of DFID, that's going to come right after. Uh, so just, you know, don't miss it. And uh, come and join the Telegram channel and let's have a chat and amazing fun together for the rest of the year. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kevin, for coming on. I am excited for the sale. Uh, obviously, if you want to do your own research, I have my personal reasons. I'm uh, already a user. Therefore, it makes sense for me to join in. But you guys do what you think is the most important. But definitely check out the app. You can download it on Google and App Store, correct? Both That's are right. iPhone users. The website is coming up in May. This is Kevin. I am all Queen Sarah. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> thank you.